welcome to eli the place where you get your daily dose of inspiration for entrepreneurship and today we have with us mr anand kumar bajaj who is the founder of pay nearby which is india's leading branchless banking and digital payments network uh, hi mr anand welcome to eli hello priya pleased to be on the call uh, looking forward to interact with you thank you so much for inviting us uh mr anand uh, i i would request on behalf of our audience uh, i would request you to introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about your background um uh, well uh, i can go uh, to two past um, uh, when i was born in kolkata and, and i was uh, uh, sent to a school in rajasthan bps pilani when i was age 5 i had failed in the admission test and uh, still the headmaster chose me because i was asking him more questions than he asked me probably and that's where the journey started of being inquisitive or the curiosity killed the cat as they say but it caught me there and got me many many friends through my schooling in bps pilani after graduate uh, after schooling i went to hansraj college uh, to do my graduation in commerce and uh, then i came to mumbai and uh, worked with Ernst and Young uh, for my article ship before that i was with rs sanghai and associates for a year which is where i did my intern and the base foundation of my chartered accountancy and ethics formation with mr sanghai and then with ernst and young couple of years of internship and then i was invited to icici bank to uh, work in their product uh, division for the safety bonds uh, which is the largest rupee drawing arrangement in the country from the retail Uh, almost a thousand crore every month we used to garner through a public issue of safety bonds of as granular as five thousand rupees, ten thousand rupees. So from that um, uh, moment where we got to work with uh, Madhavi Puri Butch, the current SEBI chair, she was our uh, lead and boss and uh, mentor. Uh, so to uh, not miss the point. And uh, after ten years of working at ICICI, I was invited to Yes Bank to be the chief innovation officer. in icici bank we had backed uh, five patents in our work in the banking domain led by our team and uh, they were all transformative uh, to automate lot of things in the operations and in the banking mm -hmm. after coming to yes bank in the year 2016 uh, we built platforms with api infrastructure uh, a good architecture to scale for taking the high end of technology to mass bharat and that is where in 2014 15 about i realized that this is still concentrated with the 10% of the, of the digital savvy segment of india the 90% of the bharat is left out from the high end of technology and we resolved upon ourselves few friends that we will march and take the high end of technology to the bottom of the pyramid mm -hmm. and we set up nearby technologies saying that we will sashishize digitize and universalize everything that is available to me in mumbai i will be able to take it to khagadia bihar in my hometown and that's how our journey started uh, priya got you so uh, just curious after all these years of working in corporate how did you transition into entrepreneurship and why did you choose to do that well i would say nothing is different actually nothing did i choose to do different um, uh, all through in the banking we worked as an entrepreneur because most of our works were project driven and they were all uh, sensitive to timeline to uh, uh, productivity to impact and hence we chose the projects and the way of work was an entrepreneurial work style uh, both in icici bank and at yes bank so there is nothing different just that we used to get salary there uh, here we are blessed by the almighty to pay salary to many people many friends have joined us and that's about it uh, you have a larger responsibility of serving bharat uh, than just beyond your set of customers in a bank um, that's that's the only difference i would say priya now uh, when you started out uh, i agree you don't uh, need to pay yourself a salary but you you would have recruited some people uh, to join your venture how did you pay them uh, initially how did you you know uh, bootstrap your venture uh, before before you made real, some real money to break even 
so himmat madde marde marde madde khuda right it is said you have to be courageous and then rest all follows uh, we had savings from our salaries in the bank that we made um, there were esops that i sold the moment i came out of the bank to fund our initiative and initial 3 uh, 4 months we did pay out uh, the few salaries out of our pocket and then we were lucky to have a great investor in roha uh, uh, group which came to uh, invest in us at idea stage nearly uh, ramakant tebriwala mahesh tebriwala brijesh tebriwala so tebriwala family based out of mumbai known to us for last 20 years uh, before we started the venture mm -hmm. and uh, i used to teach yoga in that building where i used to stay and uh, it was their building as well mm -hmm. so it started 20 years ago and it was not a difficult decision for them to just put 15 crore on the table Uh, go uh, start your stuff. What you want to do? So it was very kind of them to uh, partner with us in this venture. And then there was no looking back. We kept adding uh, colleagues. Uh, we uh, I run a list of uh, I call it jokingly team of rivals uh, in my phone. And I um, uh, this is list comprising of friends whom we liked during our professional work and we saw them working with some other banks some other organizations some other vendor so we at least noted and made a list of desired colleagues with whom we would traverse this journey this venture mm -hmm. and uh, lucky us many of us uh, i would say are from the past known to us and it makes it so easy they know that we are a sensible set of people and driving impact and we know about them that they have delivered what they have stood for so it actually strengthens us and gives a lot of comfort when you get to work again with uh, these friends when you started out what was the initial hypothesis and what was the initial product that you were trying to build yeah so uh, uh, see log judte gaye aur karma banta gaya we started with an idea and that uh, remains as core uh, which is at the concept level taking uh, services which are available to you and me in mumbai delhi calcutta and uh, digitize it sashitize it universalize it so we wanted uh, we started with the core idea of building a platform where we will add services and then a network along with which we will distribute the services so with that thesis intact uh, people have been able to add multiple services just that the sequence um, uh, that we had initially in message uh, that went on live but during the lockdown few things were expedited which were planned for future they were all preponed because of the crisis and it was a need of the hour and and uh, tremendous amount of work put in by our partners our banker friends our colleagues our technology marketing sales everyone put together product configurations because you had to rethink the things which were earlier planned for year 3 4 5 6 to see how we can prepon them and put it to the production now so yeah um, uh, that's the core hypothesis of building a technology platform and a network so the original design was conceived and around which uh, many more things keep uh, getting added by people who come join hands see a relevance bring their own good practices implement it scale it what are the current services we are offering through pay nearby so we uh, work like a, a pizza where you build a base first mm -hmm. a well rounded far reaching thin consistent crisp base which actually fetches you just two bucks if sold as a bread but the value accretes when you add cheese on it when you put toppings on it when you bake it right when you cut it to right size and serve it in the place where it is required and mm -hmm. appreciated most yeah Uh, so with that design hypothesis we have built the basic service as banking banking service which is very well awesomely engineered uh, with population level scale uh, we can handle and rebank bharat is what we say that we can handle more and more population with the design of ar the architecture that we have built okay uh, we um, bring more footfall because of those banking base banking services to the retail outlet Mm -hmm. essentially the retailer is a merchant so he needs all the digital payment threads so we have integrated a micro atm a micro pos a upi qr or a link based payment or aadhar pay and a home grown khata because that's how the retailer operates now right. when you have transacted you have integrated and engaged them for multiple other services 
Uh, obviously, there is terabytes of data that has been accumulated that builds a score called Bharosa score, credibility score, not a credit score. So mm -hmm. most of our retail partners are new to credit, and hence we generate this uh, Bharosa score, basis which uh, our partner banks, partner NBFCs, provide loans, micro loans to our retail partners. Mm -hmm. On the side, as a topping, we have bought an insurance broking company in 2018 uh, with great friends, Murli Ayer and team came along as AccuHire and they manage and run the show today. Mm -hmm. So insurance came along. We took an ITA license for airlines distribution. We took an IRCTC engagement for again, travel distribution. We got integrated with NPCI for BBPS and other bill payments. During the lockdown, uh, Priya, about 70 NBFC microfinance institutes and banks came to us uh, seeking collaboration where in the deep rural, they have lent, but their sales team were not able to, collection teams were not able to go and collect the money. And hence, our retail touch points were very relevant to them. So their customers used to come and deposit money at our outlet. So these were the few services, but one key part is that what we have delivered actually is a sachet of trust. Mm -hmm. Just before the lockdown, glad that this platform was ready and we were seeping into the deep inter hinterlands of Bharat. When during the lockdown, Government of India was dispensing subsidy, the policy objectives of helping people sustain mm -hmm. in the bank accounts, mm -hmm. our retailers were the ones who were giving it in the hands of citizens. So this is deemed uh, good governance and uh, almost a sovereign grade of uh, credibility. So it augmented credibility of our retail partners. And this credibility is being um, you know, further augmented by uh, partners like Bajaj Fincer, Hero Fincorp, l and Finance, many more coming together, sending their customers and agents to our network to utilize the network. So credibility begets credibility. And this further augments uh, comfort to the citizens in the area with the same retail partner whom we call Digital Pradhan. So the Digital Pradhan ultimately gains some momentum and people end up buying a lot of grocery also from the same store. Hmm. So the same store service growth is what uh, is, a, is a subtle outcome of uh, our endeavor. Got you. So uh, you, you said one part of your uh, uh, architecture is the services that you provide, but at the other end, you have the network uh which yeah. distributes uh the services so uh, tell us about that network uh, what is it what is it is it a digital network how you have built it uh and what are the now different components in the in the chain so wonderful so so this is a digital network uh it's a network of uh, physical uh shops and women entrepreneurs as self-help group members mm -hmm. and it is a neural network with a two-way transmission protocol. It relays services, it gets us back some data insights. Mm -hmm. So this network has been formed just like an FMCG network or a telecom network in partnership with field team, field partners who help us identify the right retail touch point, whom we train, whom we do due diligence on, their bank account, their PAN, their Aadhaar auth. All those things are then carried out with uh, our partner bank and then we onboard them as a banking correspondent agent. So that's the most sanitized way of onboarding any partner as a banking correspondent, where our partner bank is helping us to do a proper due diligence of the retail outlet. With the lat long tag, with the mobile number, OTP verified, this has become a gold standard, trust me Priya. What we have built is now good for the industry as a, as a standard. People appreciate and they are able to see the advantage of what we have built. So it's being replicated and we are always very happy to see what we can contribute in the ecosystem. So it builds a good governance, good retail outlets, uh, better services to citizens. The outreach is much more convenient. You can relay many more things because these are intelligent set of identified retailers who have touched financial services. Yeah. So uh, I read it somewhere, Pay Nearby has, has been recognized as a DP IIT certified company. Could you please explain what is the significance of that standard uh, in, in FinTech? And, uh, it's a, if... The Department of uh, Internal Promotion and Trade, the DIPT that used to be you now uh, for promoting uh, the internal trade, DIIPT, is uh, the Government of India Startup India program. Yeah, the Startup India program was very tough in the initial days when we got our accreditation certification from them. 
it was a process to apply to them. They would check on us if we are good guys, right guys, commendable people, doing something innovative, uh, uh, impactful. So it took us about nine months uh, to get that certification done. And we uh, almost had given up finally that it looks like the same set of rigor questions being asked by different level of people. But we appreciate the, the entitlement, if I may call it, uh, that we were eligible for and we were duly approved. So there is a Government of India program where uh, for certain um, throughput of your uh, turnover, uh, if you are within that range, you get certain tax benefits, advantages, uh, pre preferences to participate in government uh, contracts and so on. Yeah, it's a wonderfully conceived program. Today, many more startups are registered and there are uh, 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 great supports being given out uh, to facilitate their growth. So uh, currently, pay nearby uh, is, I think, re it reaches almost 50 lakh mi micropreneurs across 20,000 pin codes. Uh, would like to understand, uh, it's a massive scale you are operating right now. Uh, but what is the future plan? Looking ahead, what are pay nearby plan for future growth and expansion? Uh, what, what, what kind of company venture you are trying to become? Yeah, so future plan is Har Dukan Digital Pradhan. That remains our war cry, and we uh, are on to deliver this to the nation. And it's a, a connected entrepreneurs. It's a network, it's a mesh network of connected entrepreneurs across the country who work as the DAS, distribution as a service, in tandem to what is required and what is available. Uh, I must also admit that last year, we backed a patent on uh, digitizing and modernizing detailing. It gets a mega, mega catapulted now with the ONDC uh, coming into the country mm -hmm. where we are uh, connecting the four nodes of supply, uh, logistics, payment, buy and supply side. All four sides are integrated onto this platform. Um, the, the whole thought of a connected mesh network is that you are able to not only transmit what is available in Mumbai into a deep rural area, but also take self-help group people's products from there from Angan to drawing room, you are able to provide market linkages to so many women entrepreneurs who are self-help group members, uh, Papad, Achar, Mangori, the home cooked food and multiple other things, including uh, fabric or uh, various things that uh, creativity uh, helps them generate. So all of that is now um, going to be uplifted into the market. So it's a two-way connected uh, transmission protocol, like I said. So that's the advantage of this DAS framework that we see. What are the different challenges, some of the biggest challenges that you have faced uh, while building and growing this venture? Well, uh, I, I would not uh, for a moment uh, uh, belittle the challenges, nor would I give it enough credence that they were a deterrent. So I would say let it go. Challenges are something that entrepreneurs have for breakfast. And that's just okay, because every day there is something new which actually gives us direction. I won't call them an impediment. Mm -hmm. So every stone that comes your way is not an impediment. It gives you another direction. It makes you to find another approach uh, to the end goal till you reach a dam which is able to generate electricity out of you. Mm -hmm. So there were many and it, it is, um, um, I, I would not be truthful if I say I don't have a challenge today or yesterday or going to face them tomorrow. But I think it's a wiring of the DNA that gets you to resolve them. And that's what our entrepreneur friends who are listening to me here today would vouch for, that this is what they have stood for. You will yourself arise awake and stop not till the goal is achieved. So what is challenge is just another word. It's Absolutely. a way of doing business. Absolutely. Uh, having said that, uh, tell us what is the meaning of entrepreneurship for you? How would you define the term entrepreneur or who is an entrepreneur? Or what is the process of entrepreneurship as per your experience? Well, there is no uh, written definition, but that you are asking if I, uh, if I say that trying to get more out of less to more people as uh, uh, Vijay Mahajan says, more from less for more. Mm. I think that defines entrepreneurship and Vijay Mahajan Saab says it very well. Uh, if a lot of capital is available, then you are not an entrepreneur. Mm. 
Mm. But if you are able to optimize the deployment and make the maximum bang out of the buck and able to create an impact, I would say, is an entrepreneur. And I, for a minute, will not hesitate in saying that every shopkeeper, every retailer is an entrepreneur. Mm. Everyone who is in a job is an entrepreneur because every day they're finding new ways of doing things in the limited means, limited budget that is available to them and creating the maximum impact. So mm. everyone who works is an entrepreneur, I would say. It's not just about someone who has scaled or who has an innovative idea. But anyone who is able to put an idea to execution, beat someone else's idea, mm -hmm. that idea executed well is a true entrepreneurship. And it takes all sides of it, be it in operations, be it in marketing, be it in sales or technology. Everyone sitting and delivering a tech stack is an entrepreneur because it's part of the team. Everyone in an organization helps deliver it collaboratively. And every individual, it will not be wrong to say that a thelawala selling vegetable is an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. The micro entrepreneur in true sense, he goes to Washi or Azadpur Mandi to buy 500 bucks of vegetable and goes to a point where it is required and sells it for 2000 rupees at the end of the day. Everyone is an entrepreneur. If it delivers value to more people and simultaneously creates value for you, mm -hmm. I think that's the definition of entrepreneur. I would believe. Finally, my last question. Tell us all these years of entrepreneurship, what it has taught you? What is the top three lessons uh, that you have learned that we can uh, take away from uh, your journey and probably apply to our ventures and our lives as well? Well, I, I would say at least I pay premium to what I do uh, by listening well. So if you have to understand, listen, and interpret the signals. That is one key important thing of an entrepreneur. Uh, second, I would say is to be able to articulate is equally important that what are you wanting to do and if the person will be able to deliver uh, or not. So you have to articulate it very well. Mm -hmm. And third, I would say is believe in the team. You are not alone in this. So you have to create a team you have to have partnerships and you have to place reliance on them. Mm. And it's a consorted, cohesive effort. It's not an individual sole uh, drive. So I think listen well, uh, articulate equally well, and be able to collaborate, co-create. Uh, that's uh, what is important, I would say. Well, on this note, uh, we will uh, close the session. Thanks for your time, Mr. Anand. And it was a pleasure to have you on our platform and our best wishes for pay nearby. Most delighted, Priya. Thank you so much for asking those intelligent questions. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Look forward to connect again. Thank you. Bye-bye.